download my free legato course right now and learn to play fast in the fastest way possible. In, in this video and the next couple, I'm just gonna give you the nuggets, the golden nuggets that I got from studying other players. And in this video, I'm just gonna give you the, the most important thing I learned from Mike Stern uh, of studying him. And I used to study those guys intensely before I even knew, you know, everything I know today about scales and, you know, what, what, what you can do on this instrument. I was just looking for patterns, right? Why does he sound the way he does? What, what, what is he doing? What, how, what is that cool sound? What is that actually made up of? And then I tried to emulate that. And I always came away with some nuggets that I could, oh, that's how you do it. Oh, that's what it is, right? And for Mike Stern, it was basically, when you listen to his solos, he's very easy to recognize because he uses some of the same elements over and over again. That's another thing we're going to talk about in relation to Stevie Ray Vaughan. What, it, what it's really about. It's not what we think it's about when it comes to soloing. It's about another thing. <laughs> That's pretty mystical. But we'll talk about that when we come to Stevie. Uh, it, for Mike Stern, what he did was, he, had, he, had the, he has this pattern of going... Uh, it's different patterns like that. But what I learned from him was studying the bend, basically, and playing just a couple of notes and being very good at that. You know, w once the solo begins uh, with this guy, he always goes... <laughs> So he just keeps on. So what I did to implement that, what I got from him was, okay, how many freaking bends can I do with that third finger in that position on the, in the blues scale, right? And uh, let's say in this case, I'm in the key of E. First position blues scale, 12th fret, simple stuff, G string, 14th fret. You know, you can bend up pretty quickly as you make noise, mute all the other strings, you know, do a little bit of, of pinch harmonic. Right, so, and I bring it up there quickly. And then I bring it down again. And then I pull off down to the 12th fret on the G string. And then go down to the 14th fret on the D. Right. And just getting that right, just exactly right. You can keep, you know, people think, uh, oh, he's, you know, playing faster than everything. You have to practice phrasing as many times as you practice playing fast almost, right? It's repetition. Over and over again. Just to get it exactly right. With the muting and the... And then once I got that down, I can... You know, you go... You, you bring the string up there, and then you take it down to a semitone, so, you know. And then 14th fret G string, bend it up without playing it. So it's not, it's just, I right, so you go. <coughs> you go. Pull off, 14th fret, bend it up and pick it, and then bring it down to the semitone, the 15th fret. So, right. It's really, you know, I have to... And once it's up there... And then you wait a bit and then you push it up again in one semitone. <laughs> so you go... And then down again and pull off and root note in the 14th fret. So. <laughs> right. 
right? So you, you constantly go back and forth between the semitone and the whole tone. So where you, you're not actually following the bend up, you bring it up there and then you pick it and bring it down. Semitone, blue note. And then the whole point here is to make that sound amazing. You know, don't people walk around with, a, with an identity of being intermediate. That's what holds them back from actually going the full way because they think, okay, I'm good at it now. How is good relevant? Good, right? Like Jim Collins says, good is the enemy of great. Because just because you think it's good, it's not good enough. It's never good enough until it's amazing, right? <laughs> because that's what you are. You know, pick it and bring it up and stop it. When it's up, semi turn, blue note, and stop it on the top, bring it all the way up. Right? So once you once you've pr been practicing that, you can do it in your count. Then you can start playing a B minor with the B and then the A in the bass and then the G in the bass and then F sharp major, right? Uh, let me just see if I can do that. There's this B, B minor, so I have to go down to the seventh fret. And then just stay there. And I should just sit there, playing the same place on the neck in the same old minor pentatonic, doing the same bends until my third finger was just ruined, right? Just bending and bending and bending and bending. But not as not leaning back like I just did now. Not leaning back and, and pretending I'm a rock star. That's not that's not practicing. That's just having fun. Don't close your eyes and lean back. Freaking focus on whether or not what you'll play actually sounds good or not. So your brain is focused on adjustment all the time. It's focused on listening and then say, ah, ah, ah. You should look like this when you play instead of, you know, stop it, you know, practice, <laughs> right? You have the music in the background and then you can always do the other thing when you're having fun. But then you just keep on, you know, grinding the same notes until it's, it, 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 that's what he taught me, basically, right? He was so good at that. That, that I just had to extract that and then make it my own. And you can do the same thing, absolutely. If you record yourself, because it's like we're drunk when we're playing. We imagine ourselves to be much better than we are until we actually, I had an old tape recorder, you know, with two things going round and round. When you pushed record, you had to do at the same time. And then I could just listen and say, oh, that sounds awful. Like, you know, <laughs> like when you think you're singing really well karaoke and you're drunk and stuff, you know, it's the same thing. And so you record, you play, you record, you play, play, play again and again. And the more you listen to yourself, the more you actually hear what, what is actually going on when you practice. So that's a really good idea. This little thing here is just gold, right? If you can, if you can make that a practice session, then, it, you know, forget about the rest when it comes to soloing. Because then you really, after a couple of months of doing this every day and recording yourself like a, like a scientist in a lab, you, you'll be so good at just that little point that people are going to go, oh, this sounds amazing. 
I get all sad inside, right, when you play. <laughs> Instead of just noodling around with the five different key shapes of the pentatonic, you know, focus on soloing instead. Do like Mike Stern did, become very good at one little thing here, uh, so you can go there and uh, and just stay there, because there's so much variety. I also, I also, also did some sliding, right? Pinch harmonics. Up stroke, down stroke. Hammer on some pull offs. Bend with the first finger. Muting. Right? Do it. Subscribe for more free videos. Do it. Do it now. Do it.